So let's talk about some Python concepts which are not necessarily crucial, but are gonna help you make gonna help to make you be a better Python developer. So I'm talking about I want to go through lambda functions, decorators, and generators. And the reason I say that they're not crucial is because they are a way to implement some Python functionalities in ways that are more efficient and maybe more convenient. But you can do all this stuff with some of the things I've already showed you. So they'll help us save more memory and improve the readability of our code. Um, but there are other ways that we can implement them. So let's start with Lambda functions. In short, a Lambda function is a function that can be written in a single line. So here I've defined a function that returns the first case, the first letter of a word uppercased. And we can test it with this word. And as you can see, the output is uppercased. So, so far, nothing new, um, but it's quite short, but it still takes three lines to write it. And that's something I'm not really a fan of. So Python gives us a way to reduce the length of code that we have to write to define this function using a Lambda function. So the syntax of a Lambda function looks like this. I'm gonna try and replicate that same function I just did in one line. We start with the keyword Lambda to tell Python that we're about to define a Lambda function. Then we define the placeholder that we're gonna use within the function. So that's the argument really. That's what comes into the function. And finally, we then define the output of the function. And this output, it has to be an expression. So that's one limitation of Lambda functions. But as long as you can write whatever your function returns in an expression, then you can put it on the right hand side and you can define the function in this short syntax. So let's take a look at that in comparison with a regular syntax. In the regular function, we started with the keyword def and we gave it a name to the function. And then we had to give the parameters and finally we wrote the body. Um, check out the colors and note the one, note where they match in the Lambda function as well. So the Lambda functions accept arguments and return outputs without the keyword return. So that means, and that's because like I said, the right hand side has to be an expression. So whatever's on the right, that is what's going to be returned. So Lambda functions, interestingly, also don't need a name. And that means that you can use them as what are known as anonymous functions that exist in some other programming languages too. If it's just a function you're just gonna use once, then you can let it be anonymous. You don't need to give it a name because you don't need to refer back to it necessarily. If we transform the previous example into a Lambda function, it might look like this. In this Lambda function, the input variable is called X and whatever we want to return is on the right hand side of the colon. After running this, we get an instance of Lambda function, but how do we use it? Well, there's a couple ways to do so. So we can assign this function to a variable and then we can use this function in the same way that we use any other function that we define. So at this point, this variable, which is our Lambda function, behaves the same as any regular function. So if I run this cell here, I'm calling the function with an argument and it works as expected. The other way to call the Lambda function is enclose the whole function within brackets. And then that means that what those brackets contain resolves to a function. And then you could put brackets on the end of that and call that function. Uh, it's not very readable and not very widely used, but just so you understand what's going on there, it's useful to point out that this part resolves to a function, so you can call it. The true potential of Lambda functions comes when it's used inside other functions or classes. So one example is using it in the map class. Map, the map will apply a function to all the elements in an iterable, such as a list. And the first argument is the function which you want to apply to each of those elements. So it can be a Lambda function. And this is the kind of case where, you know, you may only want to do this map operation one time in your code. So there's not really much point in defining a function for it in the normal way. Instead, it could just as well be an anonymous function, save you some lines and still be very readable. So let's take a look at what comes out of this map function. And you can see it's applied our Lambda function to every element within. Another good use case of Lambda functions and anonymous functions is the filter. So the syntax for a filter is basically the same as a map. 
needs a function and an iterable, and you can use an anonymous lambda function just here. This is going to apply that lambda function to every element in the list, and it's going to be filtered out if it doesn't return true. So lambda functions can be applied to other functions or methods too. Um, what you've got to bear in mind is that they're a great way to make your code much more readable and concise, but they have to have an expression on the right hand side, which means you can't have statements, you can't have if, you can't have loops, you can't have anything more than something that's going to resolve to an actual value. And that value is what's going to be returned from the Lambda function. So the second thing that I want to talk about is decorators. Decorators are functions that extend the functionality of other functions. So sounds simple, or it might sound confusing actually. So decorators allow us to add extra functionality to a function by wrapping some things around it. Maybe you have a function, you want to do something before it and after it. And so you want to wrap something around that function. That's what decorators let you do. They let you redefine a function with this extra functionality. Maybe some before, maybe some after, maybe in both. Um, so one kind of obvious use case of that might be you want to time a function. So let's take a look at how to do that. If I wanted to time a function, what I could do is I could just call this time function before, get that time, and then subtract that from the final time, and then I'd have that. So I can put this in a function, and now when I call this function, it's going to time that function. But I want this to work for any function. So instead of me hard coding my function, which I want to time inside, let me pass that in as an argument. So I can pass in a function as an argument to a function. Just notice that. And now I can use this timing on many different functions. The problem with this arrangement is that it can get pretty convoluted if our function requires arguments or returns a value that we need. If the function takes in arguments, we'd need to pass them in as another argument to this function, which adds the decoration. And it would be pretty convoluted if our function returns something we needed to, because we'd have to assign its return to a value and then return that later. The way around this is to have our decorating function return another function. And inside this function, we'll wrap the original function with its extra functionality. Because of that, we typically call this function the wrapper. And we should then be able to call that returned function in near enough the same way that we use the original function. So if we call this decorator I've made in our original function, it will overwrite the original function with the wrapper, which calls the original function, but might also add some extra decorating functionality before and after. Now that it takes in a function and returns a function, it's a decorator. So given this, Python actually allows us to decorate functions with a much cleaner syntax, which is often known as the pi syntax. Um, and what that looks like is using an at symbol and the name of a decorator right before defining a function. What that does is it means that the next time that you use that function, given this name, it's going to use the extensive functionality because that function has been redefined by the wrapper. So the decorator has taken in this function and then returned the wrapper, which overwrites this name. So now every time you call this function, it's going to have that decorated functionality. And you can easily apply this decorator to any other function you've got as well. So decorators are extensions of functions that we can create. And the syntax goes beyond what we saw in the video, but the, well, I'll, I'll just kind of hold it here for now because they can get a lot more complicated. But the most important thing to remember is what they do behind the scenes. They take in a function, apply some extra functionality behind it, and basically return you a new function. And that's what the function you define directly below where you put a decorator will be equal to. Be equal to what you defined it as, plus some extra functionality provided by the decorator. So Python comes with a lot of decorators, which are already defined, so you don't need to make them yourself. Um, and some of them can be used on classes and their methods. Uh, we're not gonna see, it, see those yet, but just bear that in mind that there's some that already come with Python and you can create your own. So let's focus now on the final thing I want to talk about here, which is generators. Generators allow you to define an iterable without storing all the values that it might contain in memory, 
Instead, generators let you generate each element on the fly. So instead of, say, storing a million numbers, you can have an iterator which is a million long, but only generates them one at a time. So you can define them as if you're defining a function, but then they have a special keyword, yield, which basically replaces the return. So in a regular function, when you call it, the function's gonna reach a return keyword, and the next time you call the function, it will start over. In the case of a generator, Python will execute the generator until it reaches the yield keyword, and the next time it's called, it's gonna start off where it left, at the yield. So if we run this cell to create a basic gen generator and assign it to some variable, you can see this is a generator. Now we can run the content of the generator using the function next, or we can iterate it, or we can iterate through it with a for loop. Let's take a look at the next function. Um, next function applied to a generator will execute its content and it will pause as soon as it hits a yield. So whenever we run this, the output only shows the first print statement and the output in the yield clause one. If we run the next function again on the same generator, Python's gonna start from the last yield that which it reached. So now it prints out the second and the output of the second yield. So, and the same goes on if we run it a third time. Notice that there's no more yields. So if we try and run it again, Python won't find any and it's gonna throw an error. So the generator is gonna return values until it runs out of elements. And a common use case of generators is producing infinite iterables. The way you could do that is inside the generator, you could create a while loop with several yields in, or maybe just the same yield. The second way you can get through uh, the content of a generator is by looping through in a for loop. So one of the benefits of using a loop in a generator is that it was gonna iterate through all of the elements until it goes all the way through. And then once it runs out of elements, it will stop without throwing an error. So you can add anything you want inside the body of a generator. So if we add an infinite loop in this generator, we're gonna turn a generator that never runs out of elements. And in this case, we've got an infinite loop that will return values from zero to infinite. And even though we can obtain infinite numbers, it doesn't take an infinite amount of memory. That's what we've done with the generator. So you can have huge iterables that don't take large amounts of memory at all. So when I run this, the loop won't stop, but the printed value increases by one every time. And this happens because it hits the yield and then it pauses. And then the generator is called again and it will increase x by one and then it hits the yield with a higher value of x. So, and that goes on and on and on. So um, that's it for generators. That's what I'm gonna show there, I think. And they're a great way to save memory when you wanna deal with large lists. So if list is so large that it barely fits in memory, iterating through it is gonna consume a lot of resources, but by creating a generator, it will take almost no memory. So let's just review what we went through there. Um, what did we see? We saw three Python concepts, lambda functions, decorators, and generators. So those lambda functions I showed are a way to write functions in a single line. They're a powerful tool, can be applied with other functions. Um, so you can use them in a map or a filter, which I showed is kind of a use, useful use case. And they can also allow you to create anonymous functions, functions just for one-time use in Python. Um, Sounds like something that you probably don't care very much about right now, but it's one of those things that when you know how to do it, you will you'll see it everywhere and you'll realize that you can do something that wasn't even possible with what you knew now. And it makes your code a lot better. So uh, decorators was the other thing we saw. They are functions that extend the usability of uh, functions by wrapping them in some extra content. And Python has a bunch of decorators that you can use for, you know, for doing whatever whatever you want. And we can look at them later. And finally, um, generators are a tool that can basically be defined like a regular function, but as opposed to functions, generators act as iterables. You can iterate through them and you can use them to create complex iterables that may be, you know, maybe infinite or huge, but don't take huge amounts of memory. And that's it really. So try to use these tools when you're programming and they should help keep your code cleaner and more efficient.